Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Wreck and I hope that you're doing well. I'd like to share some thoughts on Berlin Game by Len Dighton, a really wonderful spy novel that kicks off Dighton's Game Set Match trilogy. So Berlin Game, Mexico Set, London Match, trilogy of spy novels written at the end of the Cold War, the final decade, uh, but an ending that's not evident on the pages of Berlin Game, which I believe was written in 1983. Um, it, it is, though, as a trilogy, I think in advance, a development from what Len Dighton had been writing in his earlier spy fiction. So he had very famously, the Secret File novels, the Ipcress File, Funeral in Berlin, two of the all-time classics of sort of British spy fiction. Uh, and, and within those, he had introduced this idea that this the protagonist or the spy didn't have to be part of the uh, the, the final you know gasp of the Victorian gentleman generations later. It didn't have to be someone who had been educated at the famous public schools or had attended Cambridge or Oxford or even what was closely associated with that that sort of establishment, but rather somebody who embodied the, the, that workmanlike quality, that get the job done quality. And that's here in the Game Set Match trilogy. So we have Bernard Sampson, who's not really in the field anymore. He has a desk job. It's a middle-aged spy novel in some ways, and, and in a good way, it's, it's a vo more developed novel. So we have Bernard and we get an understanding of who he is, what his psychology is. Um, but we also get his whole family, or rather his wife and his sister-in-law. We have his, uh, his wife's distant relative and uncle who used to be part of the spy service. We get the, the other characters he, he interacts with and we get more de details around them. Uh, those characters are all more fleshed out. They're, they're, they feel a little more um, three-dimensional than what perhaps was happening in the Ipcris file and Funeral Berlin, as wonderfully as those are plotted and as thrilling as those books are. Here we have uh, sort of a 30-something, 40-something spy, uh, and, and we have that sense of life going on around. Uh, and that makes Berlin Game an interesting book to read, but it's also a very thrilling spy novel. So Bernard Sampson, despite being sort of not really in the field anymore, used to be the one of the top spies there on the, you know, in Berlin, in Germany, across the early decades of the Cold War. And in fact, we find out he sort of grew up there and that gives him some cachet. How long have we been sitting here? I said, I picked up the field glasses and studied the bored young American soldier in his glass-sided box. Nearly a quarter of a century, said Werner Volkman. His arms were resting on the steering wheel and his head was slumped on them. That GI wasn't even born when we first sat here waiting for the dogs to bark. And right away, Dighton's giving this idea of, these are people who have been through a lot. They, they've experienced the Cold War. And so this isn't a book that's gonna go off on and all sorts of interesting little gadgets. Uh, the spycraft doesn't feel fancy. It's about pulling files. It's about trying to trace little bits. It's, uh, you know, trying to be there in the moment and, and you know, making a call, uh, find, making a contact, a human contact with someone. And that humanity um, is exuded across the novel. We have all these moments where Bernard is remembering these, these times he had in Berlin or in Germany when he was younger, when his father was working as a spy there. And the way that um, those memories sort of haunt him, but also empower him and empower the, the friendships, the relationships he has there on either side of the Berlin Wall. Barking dogs in their compound behind the remains of the Hotel Adlin were usually the first sign of something happening on the other side. The dogs sensed any unusual activity long before the handlers came to get them. That's why we kept the windows open. That's why we were nearly frozen to death. That American soldier wasn't born. The spy thriller he's reading wasn't written, and we both thought the wall would be demolished within a few days. We were stupid kids, but it was better than, wasn't it, Bernie? It's always better when you're young, Werner, I said. This side of Checkpoint Charlie had not changed. There never was much there, just one small hut and some signs warning you were about to leave the Western sector. But the East German side had grown far more elaborate. Walls and fences, gates and barriers, endless white lines to mark out the traffic lanes. Most recently, they'd built a huge walled compound where the tourist buses were searched and tapped and scrutinized by gloomy men who pushed wheeled mirrors under every vehicle, lest one of their fellow countrymen were clinging there. Uh, and and that, that sense of setting, that sense of place is something that has always been a hallmark of Dighton's writing. Uh, regardless of where he's setting the action or where he's setting the tension, he can build it masterfully. Uh, and, and so to see him sort of returning to some of his the haunts of his earlier novels, returning to the Cold War, returning to Berlin um, and the Iron Curtain is really interesting. Um, that there's this sense of maturity around, not just in his writing, but in the characters and the way he's developing them, the way that they're facing problems, um, that this sense of that, not the resigned heroism or the, you know, just bold heroism, 
but rather almost this fatalistic heroism uh, where, where, where characters seem to sense that, that at any moment this could be the last day, this could be the last transaction, this, the last contact. Um, and so th that gives this poignancy, this, this ability to cherish a handshake, to share, cherish a shared cigarette or a shared, you know, uh, coffee. Um, and, and that works uh, to startling degree in this book. But as I said, it is a really interesting uh, plot. We have something comparable, I think, in, in many ways to Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy by John le Carre, or uh, and also the, the spy who came in from the cold. It sort of fuses ideas from both of those together, where it becomes evident that there's someone there in London who's letting the information out. And they start. It starts to become clear that Bernard has has a you know a lead on someone who might be the the mole that might be the person leaking the uh, info. But we can see with him that perhaps there's there's another layer. There's somebody else who's even more well placed, providing even better information. And so as he's trying to ferret that person out, he's also trying to make contact with a longtime agent who he doesn't really respect as a particularly valuable agent. That person saved his life one time. Debts have to be paid. Uh, and so we get his, his journey back into Berlin, uh, into East Berlin, uh, and, and, and the, the action and tension build until we end with this great climactic uh, sort of three-part set piece that I don't want to go into detail in case you read it, but it really does work well. And this is a strong start to, as I said, uh, I think a middle-aged, a more mature trilogy. So I'd be curious to know if anybody else has read uh, the Game Set Match trilogy. I have a feeling I'll be reading Mexico Set maybe in the next month. Uh, I, I enjoyed... Uh, spending some time in this one and of course the the covers with the apples and the <laughs> knives are classic uh, but this this was fun to read so I'd be curious to know if anybody's read this trilogy or of course if you've read the secret file novels I'm a huge fan of those I, I particularly enjoy um, Horse Underwater uh, despite that feeling like a, a book that's less involved in the Cold War and more about the past and, and World War II um, this is one of my favorite writers, so I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks.